Long lines for tests as the Omicron wave reaches new levels in Texas, and that's bringing big concerns for hospitals. We have rooms where we could put people, but we don't have enough staff to, to match up. How this latest COVID surge compares to what we saw last summer and how Texas hospitals are responding. Criminals hiding in plain sight. Our investigation digs deeper into problems caused by fake paper license tags, what the state's doing to fight the fraud, and why some say it's not enough. We're not here to force anybody. We're here to offer the community an alternative. Texas Republicans launched new efforts to win support from Hispanic and Latino voters, their plan and how Democrats are responding. A candidate for governor vows that the Cowboys will win the Super Bowl if he's elected, why he says Texas voters should take him seriously. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. Texas is breaking records thanks to the Omicron variant. In the past week, the state's COVID positivity rate hit new highs. As of Friday, more than 35% of Texans getting tested were turning up positive. Across the state, we're still seeing long lines for tests, and the rate of hospitalizations is also on the rise. Politics reporter Maggie Glenn looks at how the Omicron wave compares to what we saw last summer and how the rapid spread is affecting hospitals across Texas. As Omicron jumps from patient to patient, hospitals share the same need across the state. From Amarillo, we have rooms where we could put people, but we don't have enough staff to, to match up. To Austin, the hospitals are experiencing staffing shortages. To Dallas, we've got vaccinated healthcare workers that unfortunately get the Omicron variant and then they have to isolate which further strains the existing workforce. Doctors worry the initial messaging that this variant is less severe has Texans letting their guards down. If we all get an illness, even if 90 something percent of us have a relatively minor experience of it, that few percentage of folks that are less fortunate and have a more severe illness that is enough to overwhelm the health care system. In a 10-day period starting December 23rd, COVID hospitalizations increased 99 percent. Over a 10-day period during the beginning of the Delta surge, COVID hospitalizations increased by 76 percent, a relatively similar rate. But during the Delta surge, it took about 26 days for our positivity rate to double. For Omicron, it took only 10 days. The data we're looking at suggests we're going to see more hospitalizations and greater staffing shortages than we have faced with prior situations. The solution, however, remains the same, mask, vax, and boost. If there's a silver lining in it, it may be that because it's coming at us like a tidal wave that hits us, it will likely hit us in a short period of time. The next few weeks are going to be critical, and there's still time to impact that. Maggie Glenn for State of Texas. In the past week, seven of the state's 22 trauma service areas reported that more than 15% of patients in their hospitals have COVID. That percentage used to be a trigger for local counties to be able to roll back business capacity, but Governor Abbott took that power away from local governments in March of last year as vaccine availability increased. Governor Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton have been fighting federal efforts to make vaccines mandatory for some Texans. On Tuesday, Abbott and Paxton sued the federal government to block COVID-19 vaccine requirements for members of the Texas National Guard. It's one of five lawsuits filed by the state against the Biden administration over vaccine mandates. Polling shows lawsuits to block vaccine requirements have strong support from Republican primary voters. The Texas Politics Project polled voters across the state asking whether they would support or oppose letting businesses require employees to provide proof of vaccination or submit to a frequent COVID testing. Just over half of those polled said they would support allowing businesses to have those requirements for employees. But it's a different picture when you break it down by party affiliation. 72% of Republicans polled said they opposed those rules. 41% of independents and just 9% of Democrats in the poll said they were against those rules. The latest lawsuit comes just weeks before the Texas primary. Whether they're successful or not, the lawsuits could help both Abbott and Paxton win votes from GOP primary voters. Going after the federal government and going after red meat issues that Republican base supports, like vaccine mandate issues, COVID, all of that plays right into Paxton's hand. And lawsuits, again, frivolous or not, are great ways of motivating the base.
But Texas Republicans are also looking to expand beyond their traditional base. They're launching new efforts to win over Hispanic and Latino voters across the state. Those voters accounted for most of the state's growth in the past decade. Census figures now show that the percentage of Texans who identify as Hispanic is almost equal to the percentage who identify as white. Hispanic and Latino voters have traditionally supported Democrats, but in 2020, the GOP made gains, particularly in South Texas. Politics reporter Monica Madden looks closer at new Republican efforts to attract Hispanic voters and how Texas Democrats are responding. Everybody's welcome here. This is a place for the community. At first glance, it looks like any other nonprofit collecting donations for the holidays. But with a closer look and listen. A conservative that wants to see conservatism survive. You'll see it's a center with political ties. The Republican Party, I think it's doing a, a better effort and trying to garner the, that support. The Republican National Committee has been investing in community centers throughout Texas, with three out of four locations in heavily Hispanic populations. But they're taking a different approach from traditional party strategy. We're not here to force anybody. We're here to offer the community an alternative. Natalia Godoy runs the San Antonio location, overseeing a hodgepodge of service and educational events. We have different workshops here. A financial uh, education. We want to help you how to build your business, how to achieve the American dream. We want to help you understand your rights as Latinos. Through it all, of course, is an overarching outreach effort to recruit Hispanic and Latino voters, like Bob Gomez. My parents came to the United States. They were immigrants. We have a segment, which is the Hispanic population, has always been catered to by the Democratic Party. Um, but I don't think their traditional uh, values align with them. Still, Hispanic voters historically lean Democratic, according to the Pew Research Center. But the GOP is eyeing trends like those in Zapata County, a Hispanic-dominated region that flipped red in 2020 for the first time in 100 years. That's not to say Democrats are conceding. We're also making sure that we're on the ground and in those communities, um, working with candidates and working with our county parties to ensure that people know that one, Democrats are still present and still care about those communities. The reality is that we are seeing this massive investment from the Republican Party in Texas. Why? Because they know that Latinos are an untapped gold mine. It'll be a battle between the parties that has more than politicos excited. The Latino vote in Texas is absolutely crucial. And what is happening now is that we're seeing both of the political parties start to make their bid to win over Latino voters. Monica Madden for State of Texas. Republican efforts in South Texas are going beyond trying to attract voters. Some groups are also recruiting candidates. Our partners at the Texas Tribune reported on the work by a super PAC called Project Red Texas. They work to recruit Republican candidates to run for county offices across South Texas. In many cases, Project Red paid the candidates filing fees. The Trib reports the super PAC helped get 125 Republican candidates on the ballot in 25 counties. It's an unusual campaign promise. One candidate for governor says if he's elected, the Cowboys will finally win a Super Bowl. When we have strong leaders, uh, it, it, it will definitely reflect in our sports teams and it's certainly going to reflect in the Cowboys. Why he says Texas voters should take his message seriously. Criminals are using fake temporary license plates to cover up crimes. Why law enforcement says the state is not doing enough to stop what's grown into a nationwide threat. Our investigation coming up.